Hello everyone. It's uh, six o'clock in Colorado and I see people are starting to check in. Kathy, I saw you checked in like one minute before. <laughs> Excellent. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. You know I like to do a sound check before we get things started here. We had a huge, like, gargantuan thunderstorm come rolling through, and I'm looking at clear blue skies right now. But um, seriously, like, uh, maybe 10 minutes before, the power fluctuated, and I'm like, oh, please. That's only problem about me doing these at nighttime or in the evening, afternoon hours in Colorado, especially during the summertime, is that we have weird weather. Like, Usually it's just August, but we started back in June with these thunderstorms coming every evening. So people are starting to check in. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, nice to see you. You're here for a bit. Okay. Um, Rose is here. I saw you in Denver. Uh, Gigi and Carol and Kareen. Finally, you're on time. And Kim from Wisconsin. Excellent. Well, we do try to start a little bit after. We don't start talking right away. Um, but uh, everyone's here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Heather from Australia. Marilyn is checking in. And Nancy oh, from one of the sisters. <laughs> oh, hey, at least I, I, as soon as you say that, because Scott is a, is a common name. As soon as you tell me one of the sisters, I know exactly who you are. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we also have Marion and Marcy and Susan from Massachusetts. I'm headed your way next week, I think, to visit my family. And my family's from Connecticut. I'm out here in Colorado and gonna go home visit family for the week. Eric's checking in. Oh, now I have to behave. <laughs> now Eric's a um he's Eric Campbell. You'll you'll see him. He's on the Brilliant Brilliance group. He works mostly with our commercial line, but um he uh, he is very good about posting links and um, information because I can't do everything and I get sidetracked too easily as we're doing this. So thanks, Eric. <laughs> I didn't mean anything about the trouble comment. <laughs> uh, Alexis, I love your videos. You're learning so much. Well, that's great. Yay. Glad to hear it. Um, and I'm glad the um, internet's behaving so far. Uh, Susan from Poolsbo, Poolsbo, Washington, upstate, upstate there. Uh, Christine's checking in from Illinois. I'm going to see you in, in September. Oh, speaking of Illinois, Chicago, I think there's only four or five spots left for day one. So tell your friends, everybody, if you have people that really want to get in on day one, that's, it's going to fill up. It always, day one is always the most popular day. And uh, Chicago, like I said, there's about four or five spots left over. <laughs> don't mind me. Yeah. Don't mind the man behind the curtain. That's that's Eric taking care of making sure I, I don't uh, when I post things, he gets the links. Johnny on the spot right there. So what are we talking about today? Huh? Hey, Barbara, checking in from Wisconsin. Well, I was meant to do some sewing and get some samples stitched out on this knockdown stitching. However, <laughs> <laughs> we had this huge storm go through and power fluctuations, so I didn't. So I didn't get anything stitched out. But that's what we're talking about today is uh, knockdown stitching. Um, and we all know that knockdown stitching basically takes the design on your hoop and it automatically draws a cloud shape, an equal distance shape around the edge, and it fills it with a flattening stitch. And we are playing in Denver. Learn so much when I do these hands-on classes. And sometimes I even like what we learn. <laughs> Seriously, when, one of the things about hands-on classes is that um, I think there's too many electronic waves in the classroom because sometimes odd things happen. Uh, but we work it through and everyone realizes it's like, a, oh, this, just, this just happens and you know, work it through. But one of the things that we played with was changing the shape of a knockdown stitch. And you've seen me do a video a couple times using the period trick to um, block out stitches. So if you have a, a design that has, say, a P and it puts a hole in the P and you want to put knockdowns, just stick something on top of that hole and then it will put knockdown around it. Oh, we'll show you that. We're going to switch over to the software in, a, in two minutes. I just want to make sure we get everything, everyone's uh, checking in since the numbers are still increasing. 
Um, oh, Sandy's checking in from California and Jan from Iowa. You were in the Kansas City class. Yes, we had a nice, nice small class in Kansas City last year, I think. I think it was. Oh, Joan Holly from Lazy Girls checking in. Uh, Sue from Melbourne, ex Australia, not Melbourne, Florida. <laughs> so funny, Sue. Um, I, I'm, I just automatically assume when someone says they're from Melbourne, it's Australia, just because that's what I'm used to. And I had this woman write to me, I'm from Melbourne, and she's talking, 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 and um, I don't remember exactly what it was that we were discussing about, but she's from Melbourne, Florida. So not this. Same same dateline, only three hours difference for me. Unlike Melbourne, Australia, which is, it's tomorrow morning in Australia for everyone that was lovely enough to join in from Australia. Uh, it's, it's Tuesday morning for you guys. It's Monday evening for me. So, hey, Regina, checking in and Debbie from Georgia. All right, I'm going to switch on over to the software so we can start talking about, and I'm going to show you what I mean when I talk about uh, knockdown stitching and changing its shape. So let me go and switch over to this. Here we go. These are the samples that I had shown in, why is this? Hold on. I got a weird message on my screen. Thank you. Well, I don't know how to get rid of the message. Anyway, okay, my mouse is back, mouse is back. Okay, so these are the um, knockdown stitches that I'm talking about. This is different. Normally, if you were to type any of these and use it, just place a knockdown stitch around them, you would get a bordering stitch just around it. For example, let's, let's see the B because that's a real obvious one. So I'm gonna go to a new design page here, boom. And I'm going to go and I'm going to click on my lettering tool and I'm going to type in the letter B and I'm going to switch this over to Bethany, which is one of the fonts from, oops, I didn't hit the enter key, from font collection one. So here I have it on the screen. Let's make it a little bit larger so we can see it. If you were just putting the knockdown stitching behind this, go to utility, add knockdown stitching, you get a nice little cloud shape. It's it's just an outline shape, but it flattens the stitches right behind it. But what if you wanted to do something decorative, like that square I showed you that was actually a diamond because it was a square. We made it into a diamond. Let's see how we do that. First of all, I'm going to delete this one. So I have my B on my screen, and I'm going to go to Utility and say Based Design. You see where I'm going with this, guys? Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so that, um, just because I want to, it's easier to play with. But just to let you know, the basting box that we add here, it's scalable. You can make it square, rectangle, you can change the size. It's just design. And the way that knockdown stitching works is that it looks at all the stitches on your design page and it creates a little cloud around it. So when I now go to utility and go to add knockdown stitching, we got perfect square. Let me delete that basting stitch. And that knockdown stitching that I have here, which is in enthusiast, this is what we're showing is all the enthusiast stuff. You can actually rotate this so that you can create a completely decorative shape something completely different. If you wanted the square, you had the square. But what if you wanted a diamond? You have a diamond now. I mean, isn't that just kind of cool? We, we went from a wonderful knockdown stitch, which was the cloud flattening stitch, to a decorative, wow, this is just something neat. And you can, of course, move it around. If you wanted to say, um, whoops, I moved the B because I put my stitches on the B. If you want to center him exactly in there, is you can scale, move it, scale it, rotate it, do whatever it is you want. So that's one way of creating a unique knockdown stitch using your letters. Now let's look at the other ones because that's what's the other thing. So I'm going to close this window and I'm going to choose don't save because I don't need to save that. Let's look at this circle here. This one here, this is a monogram. This is done with a um, BX font from the It's to Stitch. 
and let me just select it. It's it just it's just itch natural circle. And what size is that? That's the two inch one. Um, just wanted to verify so that when I recreate the same <laughs> stitch on the next page, uh, we don't have a problem. So normally, if we have this, and let's go over to the new page, and then we're going to show the traditional knockdown and then a, a funky knockdown. So new design page. I'm going to go to my lettering tool, type in. K S E, which is my granddaughter's, um, monogram. She has a nice monogram and this is the itch to stitch. It's natural circle and it was a two inch. So there we have her monogram. Okay. So now if I wanted to, um, have, if I wanted to just do a knockdown on this, if I go to utility and say, add knockdown stitching, it brings it in and it's, it shapes it. Now this one doesn't have any weird thingies going around it. It's just the knockdown that's in the shape of the monogram. Peggy, hey Peggy, uh, can you make a design with a cool shape, add knockdown, then delete the stitches and keep the shape of the stitching that the knockdown made? That's pretty much exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> um, I just, the first one was a basting box. The next one, I wanna make this to have little scallops around the edge. Now, when you look at this shape, do you see the distance? This is the distance of the stitches. So if I were to say, put something that was scalloped around the edge, just along that edge, and then add my knockdown stitching, it, it would keep that shape because the way the knockdown does, it basically does, I want to say a quarter of an inch, just because I relate to sewing is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. When you have to add, you take your two pencils and draw your seam allowance. Well, that's the kind of what you're doing here. It's drawing a cloud around the shape. And so let's, let's play with this a minute. So I'm going to delete this knockdown. Boom. I am going to use my lettering tool and in my text, I'm just going to type a, whoopsie. I thought I changed the batteries in my period, uh, in my mouse, but I didn't. There we go. And we're going to go to block font because the block font has all the punctuation. And I'm going to make this period to be a little bit larger, maybe a little bit rounder. And I'm going to just take it and I'm going to move it. So it's just a little bit around the edge. Do you see how it's just on top of the letter? It's not all the way out of the letter. It's just on top of the letter. And I'm just kind of looking at that because I'm thinking, um, this is sort of where I want the rest of the periods to go. Okay. So here I go. I'm going to take this. I'm going to select it because in enthusiast, you also have the carousel function. And I think we were playing with that the other day, possibly. I don't remember. It's been a while. I remember I was showing carousel before, um, under carousel. I have my period selected and it says the width and the height. So under the width, I'm going to change this to, um, oh, let's just try 60 and I'm going to type in, whoops, the next one is 60. I'm just, I'm trying to get a gauge as to how far these are from each other. So as I have them here, 60, 60, and I'm going to add a few more and look at that look at that nice little shape that it's kind of creating around the edge type thing now I'm gonna click OK because I have my carousel of my periods in place I'm gonna go to utility and I'm gonna say add knockdown stitching and look at that it's got that nice scallopy knockdown stitching and I can select all these other ones, all the periods that I don't need. And I'm going to go like this and like this and hit the delete key and look at that. I put a nice little scalloped edge around my shape without doing any extra work. Now, if I had a, say an applique that was already, scalloped for some reason because we all have a design stash you might have one in there or you have some another design that already looks like this sure bring it in add knockdown stitching delete the design and poof now you got it easy peasy now the next one that i did 
Let's see. Don't save this. This one is almost the same, but it's a little bit different. And I just wanted to show you. Periods are like probably my favorite thing to use because they're round, they're easy, they're blobs, they, they do a lot of work. But anything that you can, anything you have, you can do the same thing, okay? So, yes, Janae, I know and it just it's natural circle could include the scallop applique frame. <laughs> so I could have just brought that in, added the knockdown, and if I wanted to keep it, that'd be perfectly fine. I forgot that it actually came with that piece. Uh, and you're checking in. See, keeping me on my toes. I'm putting you in the same um, category as Eric here. <laughs> but thanks. Um, I know a lot of the itch to stitch frame, um, monograms, you have, there's a scallop, there's a circle, there's other other frames. Wicked cool. Add your own. Uh, Eric says, knockdown inflates about 3.3 millimeters outside the stitching area. So if you, if anyone really wants to be super precise, that's the value. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> there are me, I'm a wing it type of girl, but 3.3 millimeters. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this, this, um, monogram here. This is another one from fonts collection one. And I've been playing a lot with the built-in fonts simply because they're, um, how should I say? They're native fonts. They have, um, they're resizable. So you can make them small and big. So you only have one font installed. And of course the ones that are built into essentials, they're objects. So you, they have a lot more control over them as far as you can change the fill and the underlay. But I digress. But this is love. I just wanted to mention that this is the rounded monogram, the diamond MGM rounded. I think that's what it's called. And this is from Fonts Collection One. So it's not, we have diamond in essentials. Well, Font Collection One has a rounded one as well. So let me go and do a brand new design page. Click on my letter A, and I'm going to type in CSA, which is my grandson's monogram so fortunate that my grandchildren have nice monograms as opposed to me. Um, just to let you know, in case you didn't know or didn't remember, if you want to jump down in your font list when you're typing these, your fonts, typing in the first letter, you can type in and get to the fonts that you want quickly. So I typed in the letter M and it jumped down to Mendocino and MGM rounded. So there he is. There's Charles, Charles Shaw. So I make him a little bit bigger. Now, I could have done a scallop, but he's a boy. And for his monogram, I thought it'd be kind of cool. We're going to use block font again. So type the letter B and it jumps all the way up to the B's, block. And for my text here, I am going to... Nope, was it that one? It was this one. And I rotated. So that would go up and down and then I made it bigger. Whoopsie. Hold on. Center that again. Keep grabbing the wrong thing. First of all, let me make this 90 degrees just so that it's up and down. Boom. Let me make it larger. Boom. Let me move it so that it is sticking up. And it's going to put points up and down. Now, one thing that I like to pay attention to, here's my, my monogram size. My height and width is shown here on the bottom. So 39 by 45. So when I start with my circle, I'll probably start with the number 45 to make it a round circle so that these are maybe a little bit bigger, probably 50, because um, I want these to be carouseled around in a circle that kind of fits in that size. So it's all a kind of an up and downy guessy type thing. I just get a, um, an idea as far as, um, what size I should start with. Uh, someone said that they missed it. Gail, we're still talking. You haven't missed anything, but if you missed the beginning part, which because this is recorded, you can start from the beginning. And Helene, um, asked, can the width of the knockdown be adjusted smaller? For example, you can probably select it and squinch it both directions. But, um, as far as in 
enthusiast, all you can do is resize it. And if you, you, you have stitch artists, you have a lot more control because that's just an object. You can change it, you can reshape it, do whatever it is that you want. But in, um, if, if you just have enthusiasts and essentials, you can't change unless you just want to resize it a little bit. And that's, it's not, oh, it depends on the shape. Circles resize fine. Square is great. But if you have like a cloud that's a funky shape, eh, that's a little bit iffy. All right. So I have my carrot, which actually is the greater than or less than size. And I like the, that better than the carrot because it's bigger. So now I go to utility while it's selected and I choose, where do I choose? Carousel. Boom. The number I said before, I'm going to type in 50, tab 50, enter so that I get a starting point. Well, that actually created a nice little star in case you are looking for that single letter. Ooh, okay. That's kind of cool. But we want to put more in. And we want to make it bigger than this because as you see, this cloud is not large enough. So we're going to go, let's try 60, tab 60. Whoopsie. No, sorry, did the wrong one. 60, rotate, zero. That's what happens when you're not paying attention to things. Oh, that's probably gonna be good. Cause I see it's point, it's hanging out a little bit more down here than it is up here. So I'll just have to adjust it a little bit. Um, and I decided I want seven. I don't care that they're overlapping. I am just basically looking for the things pointed out. If I really wanted to have more, I don't care what it's doing. Oh, that actually looks kind of cool. That nine one. I think I would stick with the nine. I'm not stitching these out. So I don't care that they're overlapping. All I'm looking at is the outside shape that it's creating because as soon as I click okay, and then I go to utility and say, let's add knockdown stitching. It creates that outdoor shape. Now let me change the color of this built in of this letter. Cause I'm going to show you a trick. Let me just change this to something completely different. Well, darker. And since my letters are a different color now than my shape that I had, one of the tricks that you can use to select all these other than just holding your shift key and selecting them as you go down is select one, go to your edit menu and choose a select by color. And as long as you change the color of your monogram that you wanted, it will only select all the other ones. And now you can just hit the delete key on your keyboard and you have your little shape here that you can move around. Move it around just a little bit, line it up. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Um, Eric says the I man knockdown doesn't have any parameters attached. And Helene says, yes, I have stitch artist one. So you two got, you guys got that squared away. Um, and yes, the inflate in level three is just wicked cool. Cause that just, that lets you change and deflate and inflate. Ooh, wicked cool. But I just really wanted to show some of the cool things that you can do with just enthusiast using your, uh, the built-in fonts or the VX fonts that you have installed using block fonts. Cause it has shapes bringing in any design that you have and then deleting it. Those are the steps on creating your funky knockdown. The first one we did had the basting box that created our square shape and you rotated the square shape. Some people ask if they can, if you wanted to, if you notice, I would, can rotate to that square. That means you can also rotate any of these other shapes. So if you find for whatever reason, you want your knockdown going in different red directions, you can just rotate it as long as it makes sense to rotate it. So, you know, if you have stitch artists though, these all have angles and other stitch properties that you can adjust completely. But in enthusiast, you still have a lot of customizing that you can do that will create some really cool design. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I had some fun showing it and now I got to get some, some, uh, samples stitched out that show these different things. Um, 
Kathy asks, what's the best settings for a knockdown? <laughs> Whatever you want. The default settings is 12. Fill stitch 12, no underlay. However, I've seen, I've created knockdown that has a lighter density, that has um, motif fills, that have different stitch lengths. You have digitizing software. It, there is no, an enthusiast, you click knockdown, boom, done. Stitch artist. You have billions upon billions of choices. So there is no best. It's whatever you want. But if you want to do exactly what Enthusiast does, the underlay is off and the fill stitch is set to the default settings with uh, 12 points as the um, fill property. After that, everyone has different different choices on what they want. If you're a member of the Brilliant and Brilliance group, you will find that there are people that want a heavier knockdown and some that want a lighter knockdown. So if they have stitch artists, they can create whatever it is that they want. And yes, motif fills, all, any shape that you create, a motif will. You can use one of the cross stitch, cross hatch ones. Um, Maud wants to know, how can I pull up your hands on schedule? Well, it's on my website, which is so-bubbles.com. It's actually, oh, can you, whoops, this way. See right here? <laughs> so bubbles.com and click on the education link. That has all of my classes that are listed right there. Uh, next up is Chicago. And then after that, uh, November, I am in Australia. I should let you guys know that are thinking about going to the one in Australia. I know, um, I think the morning hands-on class in um Brisbane is sold out. Might have only a few spots left in the afternoon class. In the lecture demo that we're doing the night, the day before, that has a really cool uh, dinner attached to it and all the festivities and trunk shows and whatnots. Uh, there's still spots left available there. Uh, but I can tell you, if Chicago's going to sell out for day one, I can tell you that the Australia one will, is going to sell out as well. Um, they always have a full house there. So... Um, and besides that for 2020, I'm already working on my schedule for 2020. I know I can't, I'm not even, we finally got summer and we got the, um, <laughs> Colorado, uh, the f summer finally arrived in Colorado and I'm seeing back to school stuff. And I saw something on the weather, the cold fronts coming in and we got a winter freeze thing. I'm like, oh, I finally got to wear shorts and sleeveless shirts. Um, <laughs> when am I going to be back in Colorado? Well, not till next year. So um, maybe next summer, I haven't set that far up in advance. I know I'm looking at Houston for probably February or March. I'd like to get Nashville in there somewhere. Um, who knows? I know the Applique Getaway, their event is going to be um, end of June again. That's in Dallas. So if you're looking for a trade show that has my classes attached to it, that's where I'll be. Um, everything embroidery market. She hasn't said any dates, but I thought she said they're coming back to Sh Chattanooga. I think she announced that, but I don't remember if that was a spring or a fall show. So we'll see. As soon as the other events get their schedules set up, I have to send in my classes. So, um, uh, I won't know until I won't have anything really finalized until those events are set up. Uh, Kathy's saying yes to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything embroidery market 2020. Yes, I will be there. Uh, Maud says bugs need you on the Western slope, like in the mountains. Oh, I have a hard enough time coming to Denver. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I can get into the mountains. Um, the, the, event, the Denver event, that's a good hour and a half, almost two hours from my house. So not, that's not close for me. Everyone thinks, Oh, it's home. Uh, Indianapolis. Well, I'm going to, if I go to Nashville, I'm probably not going to go to Indianapolis. I, I need to get to the, try to get to the West Coast. I'm looking, trying to get somewhere. Don't know where, don't know when. It's hard to find a hotel that can take 24 people that has electricity that isn't going to um, charge too much for catering. If I can bring in outdoor catering, that works. But otherwise, uh, it's when the hotel tells me they need a minimum of $6,000 <laughs> for catering for three days, I'm, that's a lot of money. So, um, Eric has posted some of his settings that he uses for knockdown because he creates a whole lot of uh, manual knockdown for the project that he works on. So if you scroll through the comments, you will see his uh, knockdown settings. Um, Peggy saying Florida, St. Louis. <laughs> well, St. Louis, I was in Kansas City 
And that, even though we had fun and we learned a lot, it was, I can't afford to do that. <laughs> so, um, I, we, I only do about six events a year. That's just, I don't, it's hard for me to travel. You guys, in order, I lose, first of all, however, three days for classes and then a full two days before and after for travel. So, or day before and day after. So that's five days. So it has to be, and, and, and I don't want to travel. I like my house. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why I do these Monday nights. They're fun. And, um, we'll go from there. So I know everyone wants me to come to their location. I was, you know, I try, I try. Um, you just have to make sure that when, when I get there <laughs> that you guys sign up to come. So on that note, um, I already have my idea in line. I was talking about it in the stitch artist digitizing fans group. I've been playing with drawing and stitch artist. I, uh, you know, we all have to teach ourselves new tricks every so often. So we're going to talk about drawing tools next week. Same channel. Whoops. I hit the, hit the tail and bounced. Can you come to my house? Uh, there, well, there's nothing at my house. Um, I live out in the middle of nowhere. Nearest hotel is probably 45 miles away. <laughs> so uh, I don't think so. Um, and, and plus, uh, this is my, no, you're not coming to my house. <laughs> that means I have to cook because if there's no hotel nearby, I have to cook for everybody and that ain't happening. <laughs> so anyway, guys, um, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy this live format. Hopefully I will see you guys next Monday. Uh, I do not, I know next Monday I'm doing the stitch artist one. I'm not sure what's going on the following Monday because that's when I'm going to be in Connecticut. And I, so I might have postponed that one. So we'll see what happens. But next week we're going to be drawn in stitch artists. So stay tuned. Make sure you guys like, follow, and take care of this. Um, so that you get notifications. Other thing I want you to know, I have a, a web link and I should, I need to put that information. Whoops. Here <laughs> on my website, I'll type it and put it in the comments. And I'll put it at the top. Um, there's, I have a page, so dashbubbles.com slash FB live. That's Facebook live on that page. I have links to, um, things that are applicable to the Facebook live, as well as my affiliate link and, um, things that are available with that. So, um, Make sure you guys check that out. Also, all the handouts for all of my classes are available on my website. So even if you can't take a class, you can get the handouts. Oh, I hear the thunder going. So I think that's my cue. <laughs> take care, guys. Have a nice evening and I will see you guys online. Take care.